Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings, from the infamous to the obscure. My name is Bob Malden. I travel all over the state of Texas looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. We're standing on sacred ground right here. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're going to find it. It's often the case in small towns that progress has passed by that buildings begin to crumble and nature begins to reclaim what was once hers. That was the case in Ben Wheeler, Texas, until Brooks Grimmels came to town. This is the third store it was built by the Moores. J.J. Moore, Fat Daddy Moore, built the original store. They finally closed it in 1993, and it sat here basically with the merchandise still in it for a number of years. Brooks and his team restored Moore's store along with the rest of the town, but it was what they found in the woods behind Moore's that caught our attention. We didn't know about it. I'd heard a rumor that there were creeks back in there, but it was so thick you couldn't get through it. There was no way without machetes and a chainsaw to even venture into that mess back there. What Brooks is referring to is the discovery of two creeks beautifully paved by the WPA in the 1930s with concrete and stone. At some point, they were neglected, then forgotten for generations, until Brooks and his team cleared the brush and started the painstaking process of restoring the creek. All right, Brooks, so I'm anxious to see the creek that you guys have reclaimed that you uncovered in the woods. And you say it's just right out here, starting behind Moore's store. Starting behind Moore's store and across the street where we've really done the most work. Clearing nine acres of dense brush was the first step in finding the creek. Meanwhile, all around, Ben Wheeler was going from ghost town to boom town. It's taken about three years to get this far. Really? None of this was here. This building wasn't here, the next one wasn't there. I don't know where the stopping point is. I didn't realize when I started this project that there wasn't an end game to it, but there really hadn't been. This is what the creek looks like before you reclaim it. If you looked at it right now, you'd think it looked like any other creek that you've ever seen. There yep. doesn't appear to be anything here to restore. This is the brass plaque that originally came from here. It says Works Progress Administration 1935 to 1937. But this was posted over here on the creek. And again, it's kind of like you'd see Bergfeld Park and Tyler. It's got the same brass plaque and the same kind of rock work. At some point though, in, in recent history, yes. all of this was grown up and covered oh. up. You couldn't find this creek. No, 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 no. There's no way to get down here. A lot of work has been done, but so far only a few stones are visible through decades of sediment and growth. But Brooks tells us that across the street, more progress has been made restoring the creek. And now the highway department is going to come in and help us clear some more of the silt out over here. Across the street, another new park and concert venue. And the main feature, the 1935 Stone Creek restored to its original beauty. Oh, wow. He said, if you'll go down there and dig underneath that dirt, you're going to find something special. And we came down with the fire department's help and blew this sediment off this side of the creek. The town of Ben Wheeler, Texas was largely abandoned until this man, Brooks Grimmels, and a team of devoted Ben Wheelerites took on the task of restoring the town. In the process, they uncovered a WPA project that had been buried beneath sediment and brush for decades. They began unearthing a stone waterway, and in one area of the town, it's been fully restored. Oh, wow. This represents two years of work during a time when people really needed some work. And left permanent improvements. These are lasting improvements that they built. These are not temporary. But this is what it was down below on the left. Uh -huh. There's no way it, it I would have even known it was under there. Right, and it, this is what it looked like over there. So so who informed you guys that there's actually this this Again, it was a fellow by the name of Delbert Price, man that's lived here his whole life. He said if you'll go down there and dig underneath that dirt, you're gonna find something special. You can see that it begins way up here. And the whole thing was covered, and it's covered fairly thickly in here. This is a foot deep. And we came down with the fire department's help, 
took 8,500 gallons of water and blew this sediment off this side of the creek. This is so deep over here, we're gonna have to actually get down here and use shovels on it. We'll be doing this next week. But when you come out, you come out with this beautiful rock work right here. And from now on, I can tell you, at least as long as I'm living, this thing is gonna stay like this so people can appreciate what happened. And of course, with a town Ben Wheeler's age, there were plenty of other treasures to see. Bob, over here, you can see an old slab. It used to be a grist mill. It's where they brought the corn. This was really the light industrial part of town, if you will. Now, I noticed uh, when I, and because this is the kind of thing that I catch when we walk up on something like this, I noticed there's a large chunk of concrete over here. What is that? <laughs> It's a big we sure can't move it. That's the base for the old cotton gin. Like I was saying, I guess you'd call this the light industrial part of town. There was a cotton gin over there and there was a grist mill here. And I'm sure there is a blacksmith shop here. I'm sure when you look at this area, this really is where things got fixed, things got made, things got produced. Wow. Once you bring it back, you want people to know it and to treasure it and to remember it. Ben Wheeler, Texas, a small East Texas town that was bustling with activity at the turn of the century. But like so many other small towns, when the railroads and highways bypassed it, it fell into decline. Over the last few years though, Ben Wheeler has been brought back to life. Behind all the new progress is a man by the name of Brooks Gormels. Brooks put his time and resources into restoring the city, but not before learning a lot about Ben Wheeler's past. Ben Wheeler was settled along with the rest of East Texas in the first part of the 19th century. We had a mailman that traveled through Ben Wheeler delivering mail by horseback, carrying the mail on a mule, and he used to camp in what is now Ben Wheeler. And he camped with a man named Clough, C-L-O-U-G-H. When they decided to, in, to form the town and to bring in a post office, they were searching for a name. They came up with the name Clough. But of all things, there was a Clough, Texas, surprisingly. So they searched around and decided why not name it for the postman himself. His name was Benjamin Wheeler. He lived over in Jordan, Saline, about 15, 16 miles northeast of here. And they actually did. They named it after our postman, Ben Wheeler. And with the new name, the town grew. Soon there was need for a bank. A group of men chartered First State Bank of Ben Wheeler in 1911. I bank, like most people here in town, with First State Bank, Ben Wheeler. And on the wall is a watercolor, and it shows a one-room building with embossed tin on it, kind of in the pattern of brick. But you know it's tin, it's not brick. And in looking at it, I was told that was the first uh, bank building. It was built, I believe, in 1906. Didn't think any more about it. One day, uh, a fellow around here named Delbert Price came to me. He said, I know where that bank building is. I said, it's still around? He said, oh yeah. He said, Wesley Chandler bought that bank building and moved it over to his place to, to store cattle feed in it. And he offered to show it to me. It's about half a mile from here. I can show it to you. It's grown up so much, it cannot be moved. It would be too fragile. And it's a shame. It's gonna sit here and eventually just deteriorate. But it's just so interesting to see the original bank building, to see the new one. They just celebrated their 100th anniversary uh, two years ago. One of the older uh, privately owned banks in the state, and there is, is the original structure. With that, it was time to hit the road. We weren't sure what would be left of the old building. For years, it's been used as nothing more than a barn. As we pulled into a driveway off Highway 64, I was surprised when we stopped next to a clump of trees. But there, just beyond the brush, was the original First State Bank of Ben Wheeler. The very first First State Bank of Ben Wheeler. This building's over 100 years old, and here it is hidden in the trees. Wow. First State Bank, Ben Wheeler, Texas, chartered in 1911 and housed in a one-room shack. That building was thought to be long gone from the town until word got back to a man named Brooks Grimmels that the building was still around and had been moved years ago to a farm just east of town. 
the very first First State Bank of Ben Wheeler. This building's over 100 years old, and here it is hidden in the trees. Wow. This is it? The original Ben Wheeler. And you have, to go, you have to go to the bank and see the, the uh, oil painting. There's no mistaking what it is. The very first bank. You look at it and you just think, you know, this thing's 100 years old. It just touches you. This building was moved out here, right? This building was picked up and moved out here. It moved. The bank started here. It moved into a building downtown and it remained there until they opened the third building. This, we're actually on the third one right now. But you can see it's getting ready to go back to nature if something doesn't, doesn't happen and there's really just no way to save it. It's in such disrepair. We've looked at trying to prop it up and I'm afraid this is just a part of history that's going to disappear like so many other things over a period of time. I'm just glad that we know where it is and you can get a little recognition while you can. Brooks told us why it would be nearly impossible to restore the old building and move it back to downtown Ben Wheeler. Is that all the framework has been taken out of the floor. There are no floor joists. There is no floor in the building. Instead, they poured this footing around it and set it on top of that. But the more he talked about it, the more he seemed to talk himself into it. It's conceivable that you could put joists and a floor back in it to enable you to pick it up. We've moved a hundred year old schoolhouse in four sections. We've moved a one room church a hundred miles. Our man Johnny Northcutt is the person out of Emory who moves all of our buildings. He might be up for it. I'm not sure I would be. Or maybe not. And I'm not sure it, it's not better to know where it is and to bring the people that really care about historical artifacts over here to find it in the woods like this. It's, it's wonderful to be able to move things and rehab them, but for a single individual, it's a load. It gets to be expensive and time consuming, and moving it isn't really the issue. The real issue is after you get it there, trying to put it back in shape. And there is not a straight line, a square, plumb, anything in these buildings. And I mean, it's more than a labor of love, it's an expensive proposition. So I think maybe we'll let this remain a hidden treasure here in the woods of East Texas. It's hard to believe that this building we're standing in right now, 100 years ago, was the original First State Bank of Ben Wheeler. Located in downtown Ben Wheeler, moved out here and now used as nothing more than an old barn.